Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Garden This Game. And this is a little bit of a preview, uh, look at the preview branch that just came out today for the Cosmic Upgrade. And why is it called the Cosmic Upgrade? I will show you. I've got like a little test base here that I've been working on in sandbox mode. If we go way up, way, way up, we now can get to the surface of the asteroid. Which, in my mind, is like the coolest part of this update. Ooh. A meteor hitting here so if we zoom way out we're, we're, we're lucky because there's a meteor storm going on right now and there's this crazy fragmented moon or planet that's sailing by I'm assuming like this thing the asteroid that we're on came from this fragment or one of these fragments this is probably gonna lead into the story somehow but so we got lots of stuff up here we got meteors hitting meteors damaging stuff as it comes in and these meteors that are hitting are hitting pretty, uh, the material that's coming out of them is pretty hot. Now apparently there's different types of meteors. I think they're depositing a regolith, which doesn't have uh, the proper strings yet. A lot of stuff doesn't have its proper art and stuff, but you'll also notice there are now solar panels, which are pretty awesome. So under power, got solar panels, the art's not quite done yet, but they produce um, up to 220 watts. But they also produce 45 watts of heat. And everything up, up top here is a vacuum. So if you can kind of see the overlay here where the vacuum begins and where the regular asteroid ends. Kind of, here's a boundary right here. Actually, that's turned into a vacuum as well. But if we like cut this, for instance, let's turn on uh, instant build here. So if there's any gases here and you break the seal out into this vacuum, they will just fly out of there and kind of disappear, which would happen, I guess, in a real asteroid. So uh, solar panels uh, use the light. Now it's nighttime at the moment, but there's a new overlay, the light overlay. Let's turn that on. So we can see how many luxes there are, I guess a measure of brightness. So we can see the sun is coming out here. The luxes are going up. And these solar panels, depending on how much sunlight is hitting them, the, the wattage will increase. So everything's destroyed here because it's been pummeled by uh, meteorites and stuff. Let's try to put in a new, new solar panel. Maybe we can see these things in action. It's all buried. So here we go. It's got a little power meter. It's overheating and because they're going to have to deal with they mentioned in the live stream today, they're gonna have to deal with how the overheating works because the vacuum doesn't really have a gas, no pressure, no way for the heat to dissipate. So this thing overheats right away. But if you put like a hot liquid in here, let's say we put, or any liquid, let's flood this up here with uh, water. It actually gets destroyed. Any kind of liquid out in space here, you can see it just kind of vaporizes away So if you ever wanted to, this is like the ultimate heat sink. You could heat up a liquid or a gas and kind of spray it out into space and it'll just disappear. Now, I don't know if it's gonna stay like that after the preview, but this is an excellent way to get rid of heat. So here it is, it's getting how many luxes now? Let's check our light meter here. Now we're up to 21,000. So yeah, the more light that hits this thing, you get the closer you get to 200 and 20 watts or whatever I said it is, 240 watts. Let's just check that again. 220. So these are going to be pretty cool. But the issue is, is that you get hit with meteor strikes pretty often. And it destroys everything. So you can see this one got hit by meteorites. So we're going to have to come up with a way to um, protect from meteor strikes. And there are new, there's a new piece of kit here. The bunker door. Blocks liquid and gas flow, maintaining pressure between areas. So it's like a super version of the mechanized airlock. Paint a few of those in. And they require 480 watts of power. So they're pretty power hungry. But we have a new building material that's uh, really strong. Um, we can make things out of steel now. Here's steel. And later on in the video, I'll go, I'll go about how we get steel. So you could conceivably uh, build some of these bunker doors above your solar panels 
and open them to let the light through and then close them dur during a meteor shower. That might be one way to deal with it. You could also, um, let's destroy these. You could also use a new, there's a new kind of tile here, the, well, there's bunker tile as well as bunker door. So here we go, bunker tile. You can also make this out of steel. The art look kind of like the glass tile, which is also new, but I'm sure they're gonna change that. So there's also glass tile, window tile, sorry. So you could conceivably build some window tile above this and the light would shine through. Let's do our light overlay again. So the light gets through, but if we put, let's say some solid tile over here, you can see it blocking the light and the power meter kind of goes down here. So you could build a window to allow the light to get through, but also kind of shield it so the, these would, this would get destroyed first. But it's going to be an interesting way to combat the meteor showers. You can detect meteorites with this new meteor scanner. That's under automation. So here's one here. I'll build a fresh one. Sorry, a fresh one. And it requires power. Let's see how much power. 120 watts. It also has a logic output. Now, I'm sure all the, or not all, but a lot of these values will change before the preview's up. So you power it up, and the more that are kind of in an array, actually, let's power this up here. We'll use some conductive wire that I already have here. So there, it's it's in action. And we can see it's got dish quality 48% and detector network. So the more, more of these that you build in, in an array, kind of the, you get, you get improved kind of scanning. So let's put a second one in here. Now, if you build them too close together, it, the uh, network quality isn't so good. Let's do a little power line here. So now they're both in action and we can hook an automation line up to that. So if it detects meteorites coming in, this automation wire will turn green. So you could conceivably uh, power, like close or open some doors depending on meteors kind of coming in. But they're pretty cool. Okay, meter network quality. So if they're, if they're blocked or if there's conflicting machinery, they won't work as well. So that's new. Uh, what else is new out here? Oh, if you put dupes out here, let's load up a dupe. Uh, poor, uh, poor Bonnie here. Now when the sun is out, they'll actually get a sunburn when they're out here. They're busy repairing, but uh, it's obviously a vacuum, so they, you need to use exosuits. But if the sun is out, speed things up here, uh, they'll start getting a sunburn. Now, I don't think they get a sunburn if they're in an exosuit, but that's kind of a new mechanic. You got this crazy moon that I already mentioned. Uh, someone's, oh, probably Bonnie's suffocating. Let's, uh, let's just put her out of her, let's vaporize her there. <laughs> so what else is new? Let's go down into this kind of temporary base I built. If you want to make steel, you use the metal, refi metal refinery, which has been kind of changed here a bit with the UI. And steel requires iron, which is like refined iron, refined carbon and lime. Now, refined carbon comes out of a new new device here, the kiln, which they said will eventually need power. Right now, it doesn't. But it can currently make refined carbon out of coal. And it can make ceramics, which are like an insulator, so you can turn clay into uh, ceramics. And lime comes from eggshells, which is comes from a new device. Under food, we've got... Um, the egg cracker. Now this thing's pretty awesome. In uh, kind of in the ranch upgrade mark two, it was really difficult to kind of pick which eggs you wanted to get cooked and which ones you didn't. It was a bit of a struggle. So now you can just select exactly what you want cooked, which is pretty awesome. Now it doesn't actually cook the eggs, but it cracks them. So it'll produce a raw egg and a shell as you can see here. 
And you could build many of these crackers to kind of set up exactly what you want to turn into food versus hatch. So I've got, uh, in this one I've got, I think slickster eggs, molten slickers into eggs. I probably wouldn't actually do that, but. So then you get shells and shells at the moment go into the compost pile and I don't think it's quite working yet, but I think they turn into lime in, in here. So as I said, for steel you need lime, refined carbon from the kiln, and then iron. And it comes out pretty hot, and you need just as like just as before you need a coolant. So I'm using oil here. I got some cold oil up here, which goes into the refinery, and then I'm spitting it out and dumping it over here. So that mechanic's similar. Kiln's new. Uh, this thing, the glass forge, is also new. I think that's under refinement. Let's just see here. Oops. Yeah, the glass forge. So the art is kind of temporary in there. Now this thing makes glass out of sand. It just heats it up. And this thing takes a lot of power, I think. Let's just see. 1.2 kilowatts. So a ton of power. Click the wrong thing there. Let's, uh, let's actually make some. Now what it does is it spits out molten glass, which is in this pipe I've made here. And I've made this out of abyssalite. And I think there's a bug right now where the pipe freezes, for instance, for, for some, some reason. Even though this uh, glass is really, really warm. Actually, let me build a little... Build a few tiles here so it drips here instead of in the water. So here we go. We've got glass, but it's at a thousand degrees. So the output liquid of this thing, you want to send to like a pool of water or to a pool of coolant. Otherwise, it's just going to fry your base. So I have it set up here just to dump into the water. And this is pretty cold water, so it does it cools down pretty quickly. If we try, if we click on that one, uh, it's already down to 80 degrees, if that's the right piece. Let's actually clean the floor here and then send in another piece and see how fast it gets cooled. Make another one. There it goes. So it's at, it comes out at 1400 degrees. And it's gonna hit this cold water. And it's already, oh, it's cooling down really fast. It's hitting that cold water. So that's a pretty good coolant. You could probably use oil or petroleum or other substances as well. Got our noisy sleepers there. So what else do we have? We have, just look at my list here. I mentioned sunburns. The bunker and bunker tiles I mentioned. I'm assuming those are used for like at the edge of space. Just as a super strong door to kind of buffer between you and the vacuum. Now I've just used regular me mechanized airlocks here, but before I had bunker doors, which you can make out of steel, as I mentioned. This would probably be a good kind of airlock in between the vacuum of space and uh, the inside of your base. Now, if you leave this open, all this oxygen would vent out into space and you'd lose it forever. So you gotta be careful about kind of breaking the seal here. And there's a special piece of music that plays when you first get a dupe out here. I, I wasn't able to hear it, but I did hear it on the live stream and it's really cool, so check that out. And they changed mechanized airlocks. They finally kind of fixed them. If they're not powered now, uh, they open up really slowly. But if they're, po if they're powered, they're, they open about as fast as they opened before. So that's one thing to note. I should probably put that power back. What else do we got in here? We got, uh, oh, the critters. They made it a lot more manageable with the critters. So before your critter room would get uh, kind of overpopulated, let's spawn some creatures in there. Let's put some uh, shine bugs in there. And I've got this critter drop-off. So this thing has a new auto-wrangle excess critters, and you can set the maximum number of critters. 
So let's set it to four, for instance. So maybe you wanted to only keep four in here or eight in here or whatever the sweet spot is. And then you set this to auto wrangle. And then you have kind of an, an overflow room or overflow rooms. And then you can have your critter drop off in here. So this room will fill up and then, it'll, then you can set it to dump into here. And it's just a much better way of managing it. So Ellie here will probably wrangle or let's see here. Oh, she's doing grooming. The animations aren't quite there yet. I think they just auto wrangled one of them though. And there's a bug where they wrangle them and they <laughs> they disappear right now. So we've got some invisible shine bugs in here that have been overflowed. They're there, but they're not quite there. <laughs> so there, a shine bug just got delivered. It's invisible, but it's there. Trust me. So a really nice way to manage your, your critter rooms. That plus the egg cracker makes it so much, so much easier to use critters. Before it was a lot of manual process, like manually cooking eggs and manually like checking whether the they got too crowded and much easier to do now. So I'm pretty pleased that they added that. What else do we got here? Steel, I mentioned steel, uh, the kiln, slower doors, the light overlay. Let's just go through all these uh, menus here, see if I missed anything. Window tile I mentioned, but you can use windows for in your base as well to allow light to shine through. So these shine bugs can uh, shine through and also the decor kind of shines through as well, which is really nice. So there's that, there's the bunker tile, which is, can be a super strong, super strong tile for up in this, up in space use. Nothing new there. Uh, the solar panel I mentioned. It'll be interesting to f figure out how to use them without getting them destroyed by asteroids. Uh, there's some new art in here, I think. I think the fish release is slightly different, but I'm not positive about that. Uh, nothing new in there. There's the glass forge, as I mentioned, the kiln, the metal refinery has new capabilities. I think everything else is pretty much the same. Let's double check here. Shearing station, that's, that's old. Now this is probably going to change a lot. Uh, the meteor scanner, which I mentioned. There's also some minor tidbits and fixes in here. There's some new art, I think, in, in some of the stuff in here. Like if we click on a critter, like this wilderness and age icon is new, I think. Yeah, like I said, lots of things are going to change between, like, in the next two weeks. That's when this officially comes out. So I'll probably do another update. Uh, between now and then, just as things come, you know, are coming along, and if I figure out new ways to kind of use this stuff, I'll uh, probably make another short video as well. And I may start a new base, but probably not till things have settled down a little bit, because there's some crash bugs as well. Luckily, the game hasn't crashed on me while I've been doing this video, but there are some crash bugs as well. So I'll dig in a bit more. Um, but I'm really, I'm really excited that we're out in space finally, which is probably going to be part of the storyline, uh, along with this crazy destroyed planet. Maybe there was an artificial intelligence civilization and they beamed all the data to make new duplicates to this asteroid. Who knows? But I'm, and I'm intrigued about whatever the story is going to end up being. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.